this shit. I think this is the one. Uh, it's not open, but like I literally broke like the shutter on this thing. Like, how did you do that? Just shooting, bro. Like I was, it was like halfway through the season last year, and like I specifically remember I was shooting bogey, and like my screen just went black, and I started seeing like black bar show up every time I took a photo, and then my camera stopped taking photos. Like camera error, and then I opened the thing, and like the shutter is just like cooked, yeah. broke off, like. I'm kind of scared because I that happens to me too. I know, of course, when there's like LED lights or the lights, sometimes they're just not compatible with mm -hmm. the shutter speed, and you see those black lines. So sometimes I get worried. I don't know if those black lines are any different. No, I mean you'll you'll be able to tell if you break your shutter. I'm okay. <laughs> you know, it'll it'll, uh, it'll start tweaking on you heavy for sure. Yeah, I, I'm I'm gonna eventually try to set up like a camera with this because I have I have the wire for. It. I even bought the wire. I bought the USB C to HDMI. Uh, I mean, what, what laptop are you shooting on? Or, or does your laptop have a USB C port? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I just do USB C to USB C. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I might. I might. Uh, oh, so you can just, you don't even need HDMI. No, -uh. yeah, I just went straight from USB C to USB C on. Okay. I, uh, dang. I'm going to test it out. I have to see how long it can last because the other day, um, I don't do all the podcasts like here, you know, gotcha. I do them in person. So like when I go, uh, I'm gonna go to Duke. I have a couple of people that are over there that I'm going to interview in person. Okay. So I'm going to just use like a one camera setup. And yeah. so keep it simple. And just, it works. Where, right. do you do it? Where do you do it out here? Um, so if I go, if I were going to the A, I have some people that I'm going to actually do when I go out there, you know? Okay. Um, Zach Zunt. Georgia Tech, Tyler Rover, currently Georgia Tech. Oh, yeah. Or GT players. That but was we're probably just going to go to their apartment, set the camera up. That's it. That's awesome. That's it. I mean, when did you start doing this? When, say it again. When did you start doing the podcast? Uh, honestly, like a couple months back. Okay. And I think I had the idea a whole year ago. Mm -hmm. And I honestly was supposed to be doing it with somebody else, one of my best friends from college. It was just supposed to be me and him continuously just going, you know, mm -hmm. and then we would invite guests on eventually. And I'm hoping that like it can be exactly that in the future. He just he's has working right now, too. Yeah. But I was like, I just want to start because I know I can start something. And once I stay consistent, I'm going to just keep, That's moving, consistent, you know, pretty consistent for sure. Just trying to stay consistent and keep it keep it moving. Yeah. Once I stop, it's going to be hard to pick it back up again. About 100 percent. But I mean, it looks like you're on top of it so far. Thank you, Brody. I appreciate it. I, I had two this morning and I have two more later today. There you go. See, now you got now you got stuff set up for you. So you can take some days off and you got people ready to post. So that's cool. I have I have episodes scheduled all the way out right now into January. Hey bro, that means a lot that you got me today then. I appreciate that. I was I was hyped. You said that we can get it in today or later this week. I was like, oh. Oh shoot! I, I got him. So yeah, I'm telling you, bro, I would have been busy as shit if it wasn't for this. So. What's, what's your schedule been looking like? Because now preseason just ended, and yeah. the, the league just started. I put on my makeshift magic. See how old this thing is busted. Yeah, it's it's from a, a vintage shop out here. <laughs> I just took it. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean my. Uh, it's really the preseason is really just like transitioning from off season focused content going into regular season stuff. So last year was my first year covering covering like the NBA like all all season long in season cuz I at first I was just doing stuff for trade during the off seasons. Um so now that I have that experience under my belt like I kind of know what I'm expecting going into the season, what kind of content I'm shooting, how I'm shooting it. So it's really just like just the preseason is just getting back into the rhythm of things. Like it's it's a lot less long form content. It's a lot more photos and pulling up to the game. And I just moved somewhere close to the arena now. So now it's like I got my own like pregame routines. Like I pull up to the arena at this certain time, and then Trey got warm ups at this certain time, and just kind of getting used to everything again and making sure like I'm in my right spots during the season. So it's just kind of getting used to things again. But I mean now the season's fully underway. I just had our first game, and I'm. 
I'm hyped. I, I'm a big fan of basketball in general. So like, I'm just, I'm just happy to see hoops again, to be honest. Did you play yourself? You played growing up? I, I mean, I, I played for fun, like all my life. Like my, that was the first sport my parents threw me in when I was like four or five was basketball. And like, um, I was born in San Antonio. So like my first introduction to basketball was Tim Duncan <laughs> and then, first. Um, and then moved to Oklahoma in like the first grade. And that's around the same time that the Thunder moved into town. So like that really pulled me into basketball, watching Katie and Russ and James and then that whole final yeah. run. So you were there for the three. Oh yeah. That's what I'm saying. That I was like, that's like, what a way, what an introduction into NBA basketball was that. So yeah, I've, I've played like for fun. The highest level I've really played was honestly like middle school basketball, like for the school, like after that, like, my competitive sport is tennis. So that's that's what I did competitively in high school. So, um, you know, now I'll be, I'll be hopping in some runs here and there. Like, I'm not like super, super nice or whatever, but like, I'll, I'll keep up in a run. You know what I mean? Like, I'll be in the corner a little bit, get a couple shots up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you'd be watching the trades, but like, you definitely get an inside look of all the stuff you got to know to have handled anyway. Low key. Mm -hmm. so, like, I mean, if anything, that just showed showed me that there's really levels to this shit. Like even from college to pros, like that's the attention to detail is crazy. The obviously the work ethic and how much time you got to put into your craft is crazy. Like you got to just like how we were talking about earlier about you being co like consistent with this. Like those guys made it to the pros are being consistent with hoops and and what they know what they're doing. So and discipline. I was the before you. I was talking to a player. Uh, her name is Kennedy Brown. She used to play for Duke University. Mm -hmm. so in Poland right now and um we were talking about that just like you know obviously from an athlete perspective you may not feel motivated all the time to do anything with your craft you know or put in the work for practice or outside of the actual practices for the teams you know but you still gotta get your shots up still gotta work on things that you know you need in in the game just like that discipline you yeah. know to continue to build towards a goal um 100%. That mindset you can put towards a lot of things in life. A lot of stuff. And especially with our stuff, like staying consistent just with, I mean, shoot. I like, I'm still working with people that don't understand the process of after we record, we go back home, you got to up. <laughs> the work just starts after we're done shooting. <laughs> right? The shooting is the easy part. Yeah. And they don't understand everything after. They don't, they usually just want the graphics, the effects, the transitions and all that stuff. And they think it's easy mm -hmm. nah, they, they don't understand that side a lot of a lot of unseen hours for sure mm -hmm. do you grew up in texas nah, nah so i i lived i lived in san antonio when i barely remembered it so it was like i think it was up till when i was like three or four and then i moved to tucson arizona and i was there from like three four to like six seven years old and then so i really grew up in oklahoma like majority of my life was was from there no way one of, one of my boys is from oklahoma he always tells tells us about it he was a sooner oh okay he, he played football though yeah yeah, yeah. I, went to, I went to OU for for a few years oh you did mm -hmm. how was that experience it was it was a great i'm glad i went to school um i i mean spoiler i didn't graduate so <laughs> I um my freshman year is when COVID hit and um so that kind of like derailed my college experience a little bit but I'm I'm thankful for it just because like the people you meet that I mean that's it's like a defining part of your life is those college years like it you kind of learn a lot about yourself and whatnot so um it was good like I didn't really shoot for the team either like I was doing stuff for um the school's newspaper, the OU Daily. And I was just basically like, hey, let me go shoot basketball stuff. Because I applied to work for Sooner Vision, which is their like sports video yeah. people. And like they never got back to my application. So I was like, all right, whatever. Let me just see what's the next thing I can do. So I started shooting OU basketball through the newspaper and then COVID hit. So then I'm like, man, like I don't even, there's nothing to shoot. Like all sports is shut down. So that's when I started shooting for this local program in Oklahoma called Skins League. And that's really where I started shooting a lot of basketball because I was the only local basketball going on. And um, 
that was like before I met Trey, but he pulled up to one of those Kinsley games during COVID, him and Buddy Heald, and they played, and that was the only basketball thing going on, like all of COVID. So that's when, that's how he kind of caught wind of me because I sent him photos from that day, and those photos were going everywhere because I was like, oh, these guys are playing basketball during COVID. Like, yeah, it's a whole nother, nother thing. But um, yeah, so I was just doing that, and then I took some time off of, um well actually yeah so after that i went back to school my sophomore year still shut down half the year then we come back to school and then that summer is when i started working for trey so the sophomore year summer and then um worked with him that summer then i was like man like i need a i need to see what else i can do with this like i just felt like if i i spent that summer with trey then I got to come back to school. Like, let me see what else I can do. So I, I took a break from school then. And then I kind of worked in the music industry a little bit, traveled with a couple of music artists and then just kind of learned what the hip hop industry was like. Mm -hmm. That's a whole nother animal. I had fun. Like I got to hang around with some of like my favorite music artists in the world. I take some of the, like I got one of my favorite photos is of, of a 21 Savage playing a game at Dave and Buster's like that that's just the irony and that is so funny to me so just being in those moments was cool and I was 19 at the time seeing all this so it was a learning experience and I learned quickly that the music industry is not for me to work in <laughs> like you're awake during, awake during the nighttime and sleeping during the day so um I did that for a little bit I went back to school again then um that junior year summer started go doing off season stuff with Trey again and then I just started getting more opportunities with Adidas and Body Armor and his endorsements. And I was just like, man, like I'm focusing way more on, on work than I am on school. So I just kind of decided to basically drop out, moved to Atlanta last year and just been working. So my, my college experience was very weird, <laughs> but it was just because I was just, you know, I was way more focused on what I had going on outside of school than in school like I, I really didn't feel like i was learning something it, 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 that i didn't already know you know what i'm saying like i didn't feel like it was necessarily benefiting me so that's why it was my choice to just you know let me let me focus on what i got going on and not exactly yeah. opportunities and well, completely like, get that don't even don't even feel bad about it i know like there's a course of how like social norms are people yeah. make like, look at you a little different or whatever, like, nah. Well, I mean, especially coming from an Indian household, the fact that I'm not even a doctor is a red flag, and now I'm not finishing school, it's like, all right, bro, what are you doing? So I definitely am I'm working from <laughs> battle from all this. <laughs> from my, I have a Caribbean roots, so some okay. of my family is uh, from Barbados. Mm -hmm. And so, like, yeah, like, you know, I guess growing up with half of your family is a different ethnicity from as American or African American, the plainly mm -hmm. African American, you know, uh, you learn quick that like there's certain, uh, I guess like stigmas that they want you to stick by, you know, like yeah. you gotta go to college and it's a privilege that they're able to put you in college. It's a privilege that you're even able to be in the house. There's a privilege that that they're able to pay, you know, there's all these different things. 100%. But, um, I'm, I feel like I'm in that same boat in the sense of the, creative aspect like to this day it is probably i don't want to say painful but it's definitely the most obscure thing to try to describe like mm -hmm. i'm gonna fly out to atlanta for a game just because a player told me to come and then i'm gonna fly back like I why mean, would you do such a thing and i was just like i guess i guess specifically i could tell you about the time like the, the story of how i started working for trey uh, reminded me because like like around this time, so again, sophomore year of college, and like my parents are still like, okay, you're going to school for creative media. Like they don't fully understand like what my goal is, which I don't blame them because this whole space and this whole industry is so new. Um, especially immigrant parents don't, I mean, they're just like, I mean, they're such hard workers and they're grinders. And for them, it's like, I'm, I'm putting in the hard work, making the money, like what can kind of following like the traditional steps. And as long as you're doing your best at those things, you're going to get what you want. They're not used to kind of going around the norm to, to just, there, there's other ways around other ways to be successful in other spaces than what's traditional. And that's something they're not used to, which I don't blame them because that's not what they're shown. But yeah. so again, they weren't used to it. And like, I remember that's how I, how I really oh, started. No. Right, oh, but, 
You good? I think we're back. Yeah, we're back. We're back. Okay, okay. But um, so how I really started working with Trey was uh, this was like Fourth of July, um, and like I was spending time with my family back home, and I saw that he was training back in Oklahoma in one of the gyms that I used to shoot at, and so I literally just sent him a DM like, "Hey." I can do this, this, and this. This is why it's going to be beneficial to have a content creator follow you around and just kind of giving him all the pros to, to having someone in that position. And then he like replied to my DM. He was like, yeah, I am actually looking for someone. It's like, will you be available till September? I'm just like, I mean, knowing I had to go back to school, I was just like, yeah, no, I'm cool till September. I'm, I'm free till then. And then a few hours went by. I'm spending time with my family at the function. And then I get a DM like, hey, can you pull up to the Bahamas tomorrow? Because it's during the off season. Where were you at physically? I was in Oklahoma. <laughs> I was in Oklahoma with my family. <laughs> oh, shoot. So oh, I, my parents still don't fully understand what I'm doing. And then I, at the at the party, I'm telling my parents like, hey, I got to drive back to Norman, grab my passport, and leave out the country tomorrow. Yeah. And they like, they just did not. I mean, I'm thankful to have parents who support me enough to let me go do that. But they were definitely like, bro, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, they did not understand what, how that could happen and how a position like, like I could put myself in a position like that. So that was the start of kind of opening their eyes to the extent you could take being a creative in yeah. a time like today. So bro, I, I, I feel that on ways too I'm glad that I at least like, um, thank you for sharing that, dude, because I, I relate to it a lot. And sometimes in that, I also have to remember, like, it's okay that there are some parents who don't understand, you know? Mm-hmm. And, it, and what I'm doing is not so abnormal that it's wrong. It's just it's different. Mm-hmm. You know? So, like, for me, because on my side of things, I work for a gym called Athlete Innovations. Mm-hmm. We have a documentary that we put out every single combine um, season. And so the thing is, I'm the only videographer most times. Mm-hmm. And so the first two seasons of this documentary, it's on YouTube, and I'm shooting everything. I'm shooting everything. I'm doing all the music. I'm doing all the graphics, you know, like everything. So when we're meeting people or like Les Spellman, that's a trainer out in like I don't even know where he's based, I think LA, but all these different trainers, coaches, um, players, you know, like, yo, I saw the documentary, man. Like your production team is amazing. Uh, this is one person. It's just you. <laughs> yeah. Right. So we get that. Cause like, you got to kind of put in the work now, things will build out later. You can get teams, more people to help on when things grow. Yeah. But parents, they just don't understand that whole process of like, why can't you come home from January to March? Because we're they're training daily and I'm the only camera, you know, like mm-hmm. I gotta spend this time right now just to do this. Like I have an important piece of this, I have to do it. Or just when it comes to um basketball, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, yo, like we got this, uh, we got this workout, we got I don't know, a game, an event, whatever it is. Yeah. But you fly out here, same deal. And I'll go. My parents will be like, they just, they just don't understand the schedule. You have to kind of leave it open. So it's, it's, yeah, you know, it's, it's a battle in itself. Yeah. No, it's definitely. Oh. Wait, I think mine just buffered again. Right, I'm back. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a uh, battle in itself. Yeah, no, for sure. Like it's, that's, especially with the job, part of the battle is all this stuff. I mean, again, this can tie in with really any career whatsoever, but it's half the battle is the stuff away from the camera that you kind of got to realize because a lot of creative positions aren't really scheduled. You're always, I mean, you put it best, like you're always running on someone, almost always running on someone else's schedule. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, it just, yeah, the, the grind looks different. But that doesn't take away from the fact that it's a grind. <laughs> it's, exactly. It's, do you uh, ever, like try to get, or I guess more looks more so of a question. Mm-hmm. Do you find the work that you're doing as just like a continuous passion project, or do you have other passion projects that you may be hiding in the vault? Um. Yeah, I mean, I think when it comes to Trey, just 
the reason why I'm, you know, a lot of people also ask me like, Hey, like, do you work with other athletes or do you just kind of stick with Trey? The reason why I stay with Trey only is because I have my hands full with not only his social content, just doing photos and videos of him, but I'm also being more involved with his endorsements and being more tied in with the marketing side and how we can basically have a continuous look through his aesthetic aesthetic whenever we work with his brands um, as well. So it's like that part of things feel like work definitely. And I'm learning more about the marketing side of things while I'm doing it. So it's also a learning experience for me, but when it comes to like a, like a passion project, it's definitely just overall crafting his digital image, his aesthetic, what he looks like on social media. What's that, that Trey Young look um, is what I've enjoyed building. And it's, it's like my fourth year shooting him, second year doing it full time, like all year round. So it's like I've I've created a consistent look, but it's that's the side of things that I'm passionate about is how can I capture his life in a way that's that's cinematic, it looks well, but also translates emotion to between him and the people watching. So like that's that's the side, like the why I do it, the past, the passion behind it. Um the technical side of things like all the traveling all the all the statistics finances whatnot that can all kind of get in the way of things and take away the passion from it but i think overall just the look i'm trying to build for trey is the that i guess my passion the aesthetic yeah yeah aesthetic. one day all this footage will be used for oh yeah we got like a documentary coming out you know there's a lot of stuff like we put out monthly recaps we put out couple mini docs like we have one out on his youtube about his recovery from his hand and then one we just put out the other day of the off season I watched, I, I watched that one the other day yo you watched that one i was watching it yeah so i like i love doing stuff like that like unfortunately the world's attention span is cooked so it's, <laughs> people aren't watching more than a few minutes on a video so i'd be You're not wrong nine minutes or so oh it keeps cutting up oh wait i think i'm back Okay. Dang, I don't even know what's going on. This is the first time this is happening. Hopefully it's not because of my end. I don't think so. Okay. Um, You're not wrong. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, since people's attention spans are cooked, that's, I'm very, okay, yeah. So my passion projects, really, to better answer your question, is those, like, long-form pieces of content. Like, I've always wanted to make, did you watch the Starting Five Netflix series? I just finished it. Just Bro. finished it. I, I like I want to make something like that. Like that's that's the dream is is to be able to produce something at that level essentially. So right now my passion projects are like making little versions of that that are like in the nine to thirteen minutes long. Like I love doing that. Doesn't work well with the algorithm, whatever. Like that that's just for my personal yeah. Like just just to just to itch that part of my brain of, of creating something like that. But you know I'm also creating those like another day, another opportunity videos, which is like quick 15, 13 second clips that people like to watch or whatever. So it's finding that balance between catering to what the algorithm and what mass people want. And then also like kind of staying true to like why I started doing all this in the first place, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bro, I'm, I'm in the middle of like all of that. Like of course you get, you almost get tired of it at some point at knowing how small people's attention spans are. So it yeah. feels like you're catering to just that. I mean, yeah. and, uh, Kind of just putting your full expertise and full vision onto like a piece of content and um dog yeah i'll completely get it i like so i saw the starting five i absolutely love what they did and um, i think i'm trying to think of another document i think it was sprint that i recently just watched as well yeah, great one yeah wow. so i went i went to my bird academy oh, okay i went there for high school i was playing soccer at the time but the thing is i know uh, most of those athletes, because I, I go to their meet sometimes that they have on that same track. And mm -hmm. so it's kind of funny and just weird. I guess it's weirder to me to mm -hmm. see a full fledged like production on like a big streaming service at a place that I also attended and go yeah. to all the time, you know? So it's like, okay, now the next step is like figuring out how to get in there or make content around it so I could still kind of be like in the same rooms as people that also do the same thing because i love that as well i love the storytelling part of it making things look cinematic understanding all the framing it's like i'm i'm a big detail person yeah. with uh we're not trying to put storytelling and visual detail hand in hand i'm huge on that 
huge. That's a great mindset to have. That's how it should be. So that's how Do you have specific spots in, I guess, like State Farm Arena per se, that you like specifically love to shoot at? Or you already know like, okay, this is the best spot for like lighting when they come up on the left side of the court. You don't have to give that away. But you can say yes or that. No, I mean, listen. I'm last thing I'm gonna do is gatekeep. That's that's okay. not what I'm gonna do. But um, uh, I've definitely gotten. I've kind of since I've shot there so many times. I, I kind of try and switch it up every time. Like, there's no really go to spot for me. But I know what kind of angles I'm going to get depending on where I'm at now. So like, I should be like, oh, I want to get this kind of a shot. I don't know which side of the arena I want to be at, which level I am. Like sometimes I really like shooting video clips from the higher up level. So it's almost like a little like aerial view I get and I get to cover more. So if I want to cover more of the floor, then I'm going to shoot from above and I can kind of get like a whole play really. I can trade across to someone up. I'm able to get both of them in the same frame. Versus if I'm lower on the ball, then, you know, there's there's a high chance. Like, I get more close-up shots being lower, but there's a high chance that a ref's going to walk in the way of the shot or a fan's going to walk in the way of a shot. So mm -hmm. a lot of it kind of depends. It's really circumstantial on where I want to be. If it's, like, a close game, sometimes I like to be closer to the floor to catch, like, reactions and stuff. And um, a lot of it's just come from watching these guys play, like, every one of their games and just kind of understanding what their body language is like throughout a game. Um, and then it's also, I mean, just being a fan of the sport, you kind of understand, like, you can kind of anticipate what kind of a shot is going to happen or when they run a certain play, like what kind of a look you're going to be able to get. So it, I don't have to answer your question. I don't have a specific spot. It's just, it's very circumstantial. It just depends yeah. on the game, depends on what's going on, depends on who's playing. It's, I just kind of run around and I like to switch things up a lot. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, it's, if, if I can, if I can shoot something and get a perspective, that's like not often seen, that's a good shot for me. Basically. Okay. How did you like originally get into all the stuff that you're doing? Just like being a visual storyteller and just video work altogether. Like when did it, when did that passion start to grow? Really, it was when I was like, to be honest, like 12, 13. Okay. Like, That's legit. Man, bro, I, I had, I got my first, what I really started, so like my dad would always like have a camera on him because he would always record any event that I took part in, like any sporting events I was in. Like he would just always have, like he has a lot of videos of me saved up when I was a kid. Um, so I, I kind of was just used to seeing a camera everywhere and like I'd mess around with it sometimes. And I had like a mini hoop at home. So I'd like be, I'd be recording myself, like doing some crazy dunks on the mini hoop and like I'd slow it down to see what, I don't know what caused me to be so interested in that, but like I would always do stuff like that. I'd go like shoot cars, like, um, like watching sports just like really felt like a movie. And I had like a weird obsession with like commercials, like the commer just the way commercials, like shoot commercials or. Same. I don't know why. Same. Yeah. <laughs> like, just any, any commercials, like it can be, I remember like being hyped every time Nike would come out with like the Nike, I think it was like the elite versions of like the Katie's or the Kobe's or the bronze, like between like before playoff time. And it's like, I mean, now think of what a marketing, perspective is different but when i was a kid i was like that's so cool like right before like playoff times when these guys are on the playoff nike gives them like i don't i didn't realize i was thinking about it in like a marketing way but like it was just cool to me as a kid like everything just felt like a story so that's when like the like i mean i'm sure you can relate to this as well and a lot of people can like watching athletes in sports as a kid felt like almost i mean not to like push this too much but like almost like superheroes like they were like you know, yeah. bigger than life at that point so for sure i think that's that with my like interest like i just love movies like it's just the fact that something visually can make me feel so inspired is what kind of caught my attention when i was a kid into that whole world so when i was younger i just like let me try and shoot my own commercials for fun let me like just kind of start doing stuff with the camera, like shoot whatever. And then when I was like 15, 16, 
like 15, 16, I started just shooting a lot of my friends' games and stuff whenever they were like, oh, you have a camera. Like, you want to pull up and shoot this game and shoot that game? Like, so I was just doing that. When I was like 17, I started um, reaching out to a lot of brands on social media and I was doing like graphic design for them. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you're familiar with In the Lab, They're like Devin uh -huh. Williams and them. So they, they had like a YouTube channel at the time. They still do have a YouTube channel. They're like a, a basketball focused uh, sports brand essentially. So I was shooting stuff for them, doing graphic designs. Um, and so I just kind of got like sucked into that sports world at 17 on, on social media. So I just didn't know where to take it from there. So when 18, 19, I started like kind of combining uh, my photo video stuff with the connection I made, connecting connections I made through doing graphic design on social media and just kind of like just really just any opportunity I had to shoot, I just took it. Cause especially being in Oklahoma, there ain't nothing to do out there. So it's like, I stuck my cameras into Thunder games a few times. The first NBA <laughs> I shot was like, uh, it was Hamadou Diallo. I remember he was the first NBA guy. Like this was like right after COVID, he was like, um, you know, let's pull up to this gym. I'm doing a workout, let's get some photos. So it's like, I just, I kind of at a very young age, just started learning how to like, uh, just communicate and stay connected with people. That's one of the biggest lessons I've had. Like, like me doing this with you now, back then I couldn't have done. Like I, I was way too shy. Like I didn't have much to say. Like I would just show up, do my shoot, say a couple words to who I was working with and kind of dip. So yeah. I had to kind of grow with that too. So like I've, bro, like I've just been kind of in, like this is really all I've known like since I was a kid and I'm I'm blessed and thankful that that's the case because I know a lot of people kind of have to pivot from their passions a little bit and that's everyone's path looks different so I'm just kind of like not taking it for granted and just, exactly. just working as hard as I can with, with any opportunity that kind of comes with my way like I'm never gonna try and be too big for whatever or whoever like that's you know put in this position for a reason I'm able to do something that I still chase that feeling that I had as a kid like that's Thing. That's huge. That that right there is huge. Mm -hmm. And I, I realized that probably like last year. Like yeah. just like of course it sounds weird, to, I guess maybe to like the older generation in general, that uh I remember I was telling one of my friends that like if I can continue to do the same thing and it feel as if I'm a kid doing it, I feel like I'm doing something right. Yeah. And and of course, like telling certain people that. To them, it sounds childish only because, you know, you got to grow up and then get a corporate job, nine to five, all that stuff, whatever. Mm -hmm. But just like in the in the sense of imagination and creativity, especially being around now, the people that maybe we looked up to as kids, like simply mm -hmm. going still to D1 colleges for me is like yeah. a come true. Like just to be in the environment that I didn't get to uh -huh. make it to as a, as a, a soccer player. You know, and so I'm, I'm like getting to travel to the schools for video and photos um, that I was probably getting interest from when I was playing soccer and just never made it out there. So it's like it's, it's like it is a pretty strange feeling, but it's pretty awesome to continue just to. Man, like you're, you're taking me back right now, because I, I tell you when I first met you that I wanted to do movies long term. Uh -uh, I don't know. If, I don't remember if you mentioned that. But, so I met I met you in uh I don't know her first name Kay Spears her Instagram, yeah yeah, um I remember that yeah oh yeah. Uh, yeah floor yeah with that uh, was Kara we were with Kara yeah so I met you guys on the floor um yeah so I I, I want to do movies bro I want to I want to be a director but being a DP right now obviously has been helping me just to feel still like a kid. Because I know that creating creating the story and also telling it at the same time, um, I'm trying to put it into like words. I've thought about this so much. Because mm -hmm. as a kid, what I like so much about movies is the escapism. I loved it. So the fact now that I can learn to create it for other people and make them be the same kid that I was it means mm -hmm. so much to me, you know? So and the, thing, like you you creating these even just these documentaries that you're putting out or anything you shoot or film like you're being a director already <laughs> exactly you do that now 
exactly. And that, that is going all the way back, the conflict with my parents. It's like I'm in the exact position that I didn't think I could ever possibly be in. I'm not, I can't leave. Like I'm finally in it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's wow. service to yourself to get out of, yeah like you're you're already on this path like you're paving this path for yourself like you know it's, it's just i mean and this is the most cliche thing ever but it's the most real thing that if, if it was easy everyone would be doing it like that's that's the most like that's just so true like mm-hmm. it, a lot of times we're just like man like there were so many times like bef- even before i started working with the trade that i was just like man like i just don't I, I don't see a future in this because I didn't see a path of me like being able to work with, especially coming out of Oklahoma. Like mm-hmm. I didn't see a path where I could be successful in this space. And I didn't know what that could look like. I definitely didn't think it looked like what it looks like now. Like I just didn't think a position like this, being able to work with the people I do, being like being able to essentially create my own position was not an option that I thought a while ago. And at that point in my life, I was like, man, I'm about to switch my major to psychology and be a therapist. Like I like I was just, I was just like, man, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and do something else that I can succeed in just cause I, I saw no way. But like, what really changed that for me was just like, let me, let me give these next two, three months of just really focusing on my craft. Like I, I was literally hitting up every athlete in Oklahoma, every trainer in Oklahoma and just, shooting for them every single day nonstop. Like, let me go back to doing it while I was doing it and just stay consistent. And literally months into me doing that, like this opportunity came up. So like, that's, that was one of like, like a proof. I was like a sign of just like, as long as I'm staying consistent and while I'm doing it, like that's, it's just gonna play out like the way it's supposed to. That's literally it. Yeah. Like someone that, what was the phrase? I'm gonna butcher the phrase. Just like someone who makes it, just someone who didn't quit. That's pretty much it. Yeah, even if you butchered it, that sounds right to me. Facts. <laughs> Is there a lot of like videography in Oklahoma? You know, we have a lot of talented people. And I think especially nowadays, like when I was first starting out, which was, man, four years ago, five years, damn. Yeah, it's been a minute. Like four years ago, when I was first like still shooting a lot of stuff in Oklahoma, there was like me and a couple other really talented videographers that were really kind of um, staying consistent. That that's that was the thing that was separating us from everyone else is like the two three of us were always shooting every athlete, every coach, every team. So if you saw basketball content coming out of Oklahoma, it was usually from one of us two or three. Um, and then once kind of we started branching out and working with people outside of Oklahoma, like a lot of um, a lot of these coaches and trainers were like, hold on, like we still need content. So I think that kind of started, I don't want to say a revolution, but like in a need, a demand for content creating. So they were just like, they were starting to hire like a lot of kids like, hey, like, you know, that we see the results of what social media can do, especially for, you know, trainers out of Oklahoma, it's the same problem. It's like, it's, it, it's hard to make a national impression or a viral impression in a place that's so small and not really known. Like you tell us, like everyone I tell them from Oklahoma, they're just like, what's in Oklahoma? So it's like, that's it's interesting. Yeah. So it's interesting. I think that's where it kind of started to kind of grow. Cause now there's a lot of videographers back home. Like, Whenever I go home to like different, um, different events or or different sporting events, like there's always five six cameramen around. But now now it's everywhere. Like that's that's literally what I'm saying. Like now, in, in, I feel like in the past five years it really exploded. Like mm-hmm. four or five years now, every every athlete on almost every level got a camera person following. There are kids that are like what like 11, 12 getting mic'd up in an AAU game. Like it's <laughs> crazy what it's gotten to, and it's. I mean, it's kind of a good and it's it's a great thing because there's more people doing what we love. Like it's and they're, they're able to see like, oh, there's a there's people that are successful. Like me growing up, like I, I watched, I was looking at what Cool Mac was doing. I was looking at what the Gradient Visuals was doing. And like, these are the guys that really inspired me to be like, oh, there's a, there's a way to be successful in these spaces. So now there's more proof of that. There's a lot more people who are trying to do this as a career. So that's something that's 
really cool to see but now there's a lot of people that are doing it for the wrong reasons like they're just like oh like mm -hmm. as long as i got a camera i'm a cameraman which to like i'm not i'm not trying to say you can't like you can have an iphone and you're a cameraman as oh, long as what you say thinking about like why you're doing it like if you're just trying to get clout like you're just just a camera a camera can get you into a lot of places like it can get you in a lot of places that you don't realize but some people just do it for that like mm -hmm. like I'm a firm believer that there's really no bad photos or videos as long as there's an intention behind it. Yeah. So it's like, I mean, again, the last thing I'm gonna do is is hate on someone's passion, but I've yeah, yeah. seen a lot of people who pick up a camera for the wrong reasons and they kind of just get stuck at where they're at. Cause now like there's so many, so many people and, like it, it's kind of your, your, it's almost like a bidding war for people to try and find clients or people to work with and it all kind of looks different and it's it's interesting but yeah no now there's a lot of people in oklahoma for sure from from when i started that's crazy to hear it's like so that it sounds like it's a spot that didn't really have much of i guess like media or videographers mm -hmm. and now it's like they're almost like everywhere yeah kind yeah. of yeah. I mean, I prefer, like traditional videographers okay 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 what there is it's just the, the sports world and just being able to like they just it didn't seem like and that's really because of social media is it's just it's become such a marketing tool that if you want to grow your business at all you need a videographer Ooh, video bro it's more i'm so bad and i got into it because like it's over here over in tampa mm -hmm. like uh even around like 2018 2019 and you just hear different people's opinions of like are you sure you can make money with that you know like in my perspective i'm like it's everywhere it's like mm -hmm. what do you do in your free time you watch tv you got a ipad tablet phone it's mm -hmm. like marketing is everywhere marketing in anything visually commercially sports like it's everywhere like the only reason that we're able to see stuff on the screen is because people that kind of do what we do and you got to have a love for it for it to be good anyway yeah. you know um just like hearing that and especially now in the place that I'm in, everyone needs video. Yeah. And it's, it's also confusing, I guess, on the, I'll say like small business side, in the sense of people that need clips or people that need small 15 minute ads, sometimes when they may not know exactly what they need to where if they, you, you could walk into someone's store here and just record anything. And to them, it's like a great video because it's 4K. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like they don't, who don't really know what they're looking for exactly yeah. they don't know their deliveries they don't know what like their message they need to kind of try to get across to the people you know what i'm trying to say mm -hmm. it's kind of leaving it all in the hands of people but that, that's what i'm saying there's there's people who just because they, they'll have a camera and be like yeah i got a camera i can charge you 200 300 for a video and then they're i mean the client's gonna be like oh cool i got a video of myself and my product that's fine but they don't realize there's probably a kid out there who is going to even charge you less and has a better eye for it. And that, that's the, that's the bad part about having so many videographers. I just feel like a lot of, a lot of chances are getting taken away from people who can really like share the vision in a, in a real way versus some people, but like half the battle is connections nowadays. So about who you know, bro, Yeah, I'm from the DMV, PG mm -hmm. County born and raised pg county maryland okay. and it's the same thing out there i'm not coming from my hometown but there are plenty of people who will walk around of like the hbcu events and have a camera and of course photos is like a huge thing that you can uh you know send out to people keep your memories whatnot but of course a lot of people do call themselves content creators when they usually just have the camera for memories mm -hmm. you know instead of actually like business so it's like the same exact thing because people will see them like, oh, you got a camera, you can create this for me. Mm -hmm. it, it's the same deal, same deal. But I know you're into the A, and I, I guess that's where like the home base is. Mm -hmm. Set the record straight, okay? And I hope I don't need nobody coming for you. <laughs> hey, how's the food? Oh, man, I love the food out here. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, like. Again, like I said before, I'm I'm Indian of Indian descent, so I love my flavor, I love my spices, I love love all of them. I mean, like my favorite, everyone I talk to Atlanta about, I always say the food. 
I've heard mixed opinions though. Like surprisingly, like, there's some it's people the who, huh? I have too. Like that's why I'm like, like I've been, but I'm not. I haven't been enough. I've not been there that long. Yeah, no. There's. I, I always tell people Atlanta has the best wings. Like, that's that's their staple. I feel like it's just the wings here are fire. So I just feel like the like your soul food spots, anything that's like like known. I, I mean, obviously there's your like like standard food chains everywhere, but like if you can find some really like like hidden spots, some low key spots that only certain people know, like you can find some great food out here. So I, I love the food in Atlanta. I mean, I'd say Atlanta, New York, and maybe LA got like some of my favorite food spots. I still need to go check out more Chicago food spots. I'll do that this year, but. Okay. What's well, like a typical, cause I'm, I'm trying to put myself almost in your shoes, but mm-hmm. I know wings is like one of their staples for sure. I mm-hmm. always hear, I see Aunt, Aunt Edwards. Oh yeah. <laughs> bring an interview. <laughs> Captain Atlanta. Wings and hot sauce. So yeah. Typical day, I guess typical game day. What's like, is there a specific spot that you always go to food wise that is just like a good eat spot before a game? I uh, see for game days, it becomes pretty basic. I'm okay, okay. <laughs> I'm pretty I'm pretty addicted to Chipotle. <laughs> Chipotle addict. I'm a Chipotle addict. So I mean, um yeah, like that's just the like in my game day routine, like I always have Chipotle because that just kind of keeps me going throughout my day and it's I know I'm uh, I'm not gonna get hungry easily, and that's I'm always gonna enjoy it. But if there's like a specific food spot that I sometimes get after games, is you gotta check out um, Jr. Crickets. I don't know if you've heard about it. Crickets, no, that's that's a great wing spot in Atlanta. They got, I mean, I haven't seen anything compete with that yet. So Jr. Crickets, I gotta pop out next time I'm out there. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure I'll be over there in sometime in November. I just gotta figure out when. But yeah, you gotta let me know when you are. Oh, for sure. J J R Crickets. Yep. J R Crickets. How far is that from State Farm? Uh, I'm probably say like ten minutes. It's like near Midtown. Yeah, easy. Yeah. That's a martyr trip. <laughs> <laughs> it's a martyr trip. <laughs> That's a bet. Hmm. I gotta think because I'm I'm running out of questions. Low key. No, you good. So I got. All the time in the world, so whatever you ask. Hopefully, I'm not like rambling too much. Nah, bro, that's the whole point. That's the whole point. Have you have you done one of these before at all? Yeah, I've done a couple. Um, I did some like very earlier on. I did one last year. I got one coming up. I I, I want to be more in front of the camera. Like I, I, I that's that's one of my goals for this year is definitely put myself in front of the camera more. So. Dog. I'm literally I'm trying even still this it's not this part is not uncomfortable anymore that's good Holding the camera up and talking to the camera yeah it's, that part's not hard but like I have to figure out how to plan it better strategically to make more impactful videos because I can just talk and ramble about anything mm-hmm. but I do want to put meaningful stuff out there for creatives for like Christians because I'm a Christian mm-hmm. and um one more like athletes, athletes that have transitioned over from their sport to life. Mm. I'm, I'm big on mental health. Huge. Oh, yeah. And like, so I played soccer for 15 years mm-hmm. and I didn't pick up a camera, bro, until college. Yeah. I didn't pick up a camera until uh, 2019. But I uh, knew I wanted to do a movie since I was seven. Mm-hmm. And so I thought the director, you know, they just sit in a chair. They just tell people what to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like I, I didn't worry about the camera like that. No. Mm-hmm. Um, I started. I gotta, you got to understand all the other positions. got to understand them all. So I'm happy that I've gone through what I've gone through to understand, you know, everything possible that could go on a movie set. And now, I, I like, I adore it so much more because – I, I can appreciate almost every possible detail in every single shot, down to the set design, the colors, the tie, like every everything, bro. Me watching a movie is a whole experience in itself. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean that's the uh, yeah for me. Like for me, I, I always wanted to do like shoot an ad campaign. That was always one of my goals, and like um, I got the opportunity to do Trey's third signature shoe ad campaign. 
by cities. And I was, I was one of the youngest to do it. I was like 19 when I got asked to do that. And um, I remember like, I was like, so like, it was just crazy. Cause that, that was always like a life goal of mine, but I got to do it so early on in my career. It kind of threw off my perspective on the course of my career a little bit, but um, I was definitely like very nervous. I, I, I don't want to say nervous because I was I was more excited. Like I was very excited to do it and um, just getting like it was such an like a weird experience to me because I knew I've always wanted to do it. But now that I'm there, like I was like in a lot of Zoom calls, like prep, and I was still in school, so I'm like I'm studying for finals while also in these calls every week with Adidas and and different directors and different. Um, like their marketing team and and they're like oh like this this is your they're giving me like a budget we're like uh pick your uh digitech pick your person's help with your lighting like put your team together and i'm like oh shoot like okay well i guess this is what it what it looks like so i i was that was like just being thrown into that experience like i i learned so much from it and like like i mean i i was you know given the trust and the expectation to produce a product for Adidas, this brand. Mm -hmm. But that whole thing was also still like a learning experience for me. Like I realized like how many people are on set and like, like, yeah, I'm, I'm the job for me to do is to get these photos, but the job for me to do is also like direct people to help create my vision come to life. Like I realized how important collaborating is and be able to know how to work with people and understanding their positions as well. So like, you know, like this person is to help me adjust and control the lighting. So I'm talking to talking to this dude, like, okay, well, how can we achieve this look? And I kind of let him, because he's in his space of expertise, kind of break it down to me. So that whole experience really taught me like what being a director or, or someone in a lead position for a shoot really means. And like, like you got to be able to let other people just do their jobs too. And be like, I, I can trust you to, to yep. do this and help me do it. Like, there's like there's so much more to learn like just just being a good photographer a good videographer is not gonna cut it in positions like that like looking back now like i know i was young at that point but i would just look back now like man there's so many things i could have done better at that shoot and that just comes with like just learning that there's so much more than just the actual job itself and, and something like that what's the importance of like i mean to you what's the importance of communication and just understanding how to utilize other people's strengths on a set like that. Yeah, that's that's very important. I think I've always been so adamant on on being a one man crew on everything. Like if a brand needed graphic design, I got you. I'm gonna do it. If they needed 3D animation, I'm gonna learn how to 3D animate in a couple of nights. <laughs> like I'm gonna figure it out. <laughs> I was always so adamant on doing everything on my own. Mm -hmm. uh, so being working on bigger projects and being part of teams who collaborate more, I've realized like how much more efficient things can be done when you kind of source it out to different things. Like, like for example, like, so we did like a charity weekend um, and an event in Norman this past summer. And like, I kind of knew going into it, like I'm not going to be able to do this with just me. So I, I was able to hire a buddy of mine and, and he got a couple people for me and we kind of co-directed this thing. And, we were able to have like three, four cameras out, like at a group shower, kind of direct people like, all right, we got this event going on here. I'm following Trey here, meet us at this time. And that whole experience was was amazing because we were able to get all the content we needed and more. And like, I'm also just, you know, like it's, it takes a lot of pressure off of me as well. So I'm, I'm able to think more clearly and, and creatively than worrying about well, I still got to edit this or I still got to shoot this. Like, no, let me make sure that the vision comes to life. That's my goal is my vision comes to life and and have other people carry out the other people that I trust to help come to have the vision come to life. And that's that's the biggest thing is just trusting them. And, and I was able to work with people who got us like all the content we needed, a cool little recap video. And mm -hmm. that's, that's the biggest thing as long as the most efficient way, the most productive way, and the most creative way to achieve whatever you're trying to do. I feel like can be accomplished with, with working with more people than just yourself. hundred percent, bro. You're, you're like, you reminded me of a project that I'm actually a part of uh, these past couple weekends. My friend Isaiah Breeding, 
Um, I'll send you his page. Is the page is like Save Beat Media, okay. but he's doing his right now. He's doing a senior thesis short film, so oh. it's pretty fun for me to uh, help with it, but also just be a part of another crew yeah. and just like, you know, the more that we continue to shoot, it gets more fun for everybody, and we all move smoother together. Mm-hmm. So knowing that how each other set that I'm gonna be on for commercials, ads, sports, like whatever it is, media days, that they all kind of operate in that similar way. And like that, I I know that's, I would love to just continue to do that almost every day of the week. Mm-hmm. I, I love that kind of stuff. I don't even know what it stems from. Maybe it's just like having fun with friends, basically. <laughs> like, I, I don't really know. That's that's what it's like too. And, and when, especially when you're with a team of people who have a shared vision, it's like, just multiple brains on on an idea like especially when you can bounce off ideas from people and you're not in a position where you second guess yourself because if you have an idea someone's either going to tell you it's great or be like okay well let's kind of tweak it and and do something else with it so being open to other ideas is important as well but yeah like i've ever since i've done stuff like that i'm just like man i gotta do I want to be a part of more teams mm-hmm. going forward in, in my career. Like right now, again, it's been like a one man crew, but definitely more collaborative efforts in the future. Yeah. Do you still, I mean, I know uh, State Farm has some like concerts and stuff like that. Do you still participate with doing like concert photography? I know you're talking about artists earlier. Yeah, I I want to. I really want to. And I think I'm going to try. I know, I know Don Toller is performing here next week. I kind of want to see if I can get a credential to go shoot that, but um, I need to figure out how to do that out here. I really want to. I think I'm. It's not that I'm I'm bored of basketball at all. It's I oh, just yeah. wanna, I want to kind of like diversify, but also I think it'll kind of give me like a little creative reset, kind of shooting other things in sports because I kind of like implementing the way other things are their sports or other forms of entertainment are captured into the way i capture basketball i mm-hmm. guess well that's that's a, yeah i could see that that's, see that. that's, that's why i want to do some more concert stuff coming up so that, that that'll be a goal of mine for sure i can see that i um i started out first like like the very first creative thing i've ever done was be a music producer so i taught myself how to make beats since I was like 14. Are you using FL Studio? Yeah, bro, FL Studio. Um, my mom was the one to get me the software, FL Studio. Um, so I learned how to do that just from a laptop. I've never I've never made beats in a studio ever. And like, it was kind of funny trying to still explain like, I'm uploading my beats to YouTube, sending them out to artists or just sending different packs to artists. And my parents still weren't able to grasp, like, you haven't been to a studio. How can you still make a song? Yeah. <laughs> like, trying to understand, like, most of it is now just. Man, yeah. some of the biggest producers are, are just still making beats on their laptops. And, like, yeah. or whatever. It was day. And, like, um, so I started out as a music producer. And then I got into graphics a little bit, obviously, because of YouTube and, like, uploading thumbnails, just having the graphics for the videos. Um, to put audio under them, obviously. And so going into college, the degree that I had was called New Media. And that was an umbrella of uh, film, music production, graphic Mm -hmm. design, and coding. And I hate coding with a passion. I will never code another day in my life. (laughs) That's crazy. I'm like, remind me to come back to the coding thing. Oh, please. (laughs) I I can't do it. It's like, for some reason, the brain I have is not processed well with coding, man. Uh never able to understand it but with that i unknowingly went into a major that made me realize most of the stuff that i already wanted to do was better to learn it outside of school oh, like, like um, exactly that because like each class that i was going into the description was like oh shoot i want to learn exactly this then we get to the class and we don't do any of it. We just gotta talk about it. We're not, mm-hmm. we're not hands on, you know. And like that, that's something that really aggravated me because obviously you hear the back end of it. It's like we're paying all this money for college and you, Man, bro, like, and it's like that's not that's not in my hands. Yeah. You talk to them, you know, they like. Yeah, but, that's, no, I, I totally. It's crazy. Like I, I hundred percent get it. 
and it's funny you bring up coding because I, before I chose this as my career path, like I was really set on being a computer scientist. So mm-hmm. I was like in high school, I was in a computer science academy. So like I'd basically half my day go to like a community college and learn coding. And then I drive back to my high school to get like do all my core classes, like English history, all that stuff, my sports. So like I was I was so set on doing that. I was learning how to do C sharp, JavaScript, like all these different coding languages. And like I wasn't like bad at it at all, but bro, I remember like like this is where it really flipped the switch. Like I vividly remember like my junior year of high school, just like I was just sitting in in the class and like it was quiet. And like there's just a whole bunch of clicking and I'm staring at like all these numbers and and letters and everything. And I'm just like, bro, like this is I cannot see myself doing this for the rest of my life. And I, I knew people in that class that were like really passionate about it. And I know that was amazing for them. And like the program I was a part of was amazing. Um, that's truly what I was passionate about. I was in a great position to do that. But like I remember thinking that and I literally like the next week, like just dropped out of it. I was like, I can't, I can't do this. I'm pivot. like, that was around the same time I was, I was starting to work with a lot of stuff, a lot of people on social media. So I was like doing what I was passionate about and starting to see that kind of come to life. And I was like, yo, like what's, I'd rather focus on this and make this reality than, than try and do that. So that's when I made that switch. So now it's like, okay, well, let, let me go to school for, that's why I switched my major going into college instead of computer, computer science me go into creative media production and that's the major we had and even that was like they had classes like documentary production they had stuff like photoshop they had stuff like after effects which was all stuff that was great but kind of like what you were saying like i mean you got to be the one to dig into it yeah and and you weren't like the stuff they're teaching in class i feel like were for people who didn't know anything about it yet. Like they would teach all the basics, which are important, but I learned the basics on YouTube. Like Mm -hmm. I was like 16. So it's like, if this is something you really want to do, like you don't, and I hate giving this advice to an extent, but like, you don't, I mean, it's true though. You don't need college to make it in a creative space. If you need, if you need like a, if you need like a, a, a solid backing or a foundation for a career path or for like, there's jobs that need college. If you're trying to be a doctor, you need college, career sciences, any STEM focused um, career path, you're gonna need need college for that. But a lot of times what's more important is what you're accomplishing outside of school mm-hmm. um, to really be successful. And, and I've learned the most act like actually being in the on field. The, yeah, exactly. Exactly being just being in the field than what I was learning in classroom. So it's that's it's tough. Like it's it's not for everyone, but there are also people that I know who went through the whole program, and you know they've. It's for a lot of people. It's tough to find a job, right out of college in like a creative space, just relying on that degree. Like you got to have experience. Like you can graduate, have the degree. That degree is going to help you, but it's not going to mean nothing if you don't have anything already built up for you. Your resume already built up. Uh, so that that's a lot of. A lot of stuff that's not really taught or shown and and our professors are always like giving us projects to do like trying to connect us and stuff but i mean it's it's really not their fault that the creative space and what digital media looks like what documenting looks like is is so different than what when these curriculums were put together so that's why it's, it's always like a personal goal of mine like one day in the future when i'm retired to do my own college course on everything i've learned like my whole life see that's why you said that I'm glad you said that. What? I was telling. What? I was telling one of my friends I wanted to do that just because, mm-hmm. not even to be like a tyrant against college. Just the fact that it seems like an avenue that so many different creatives are going to run into is like, oh shoot, I could have just spent all these different years just simply creating and not worrying about all the extra classes, you know, that just kind of like seem meaningless in a sense. And I was just like, yeah, like it, it would obviously do diligence because you're just honestly giving back what you've learned. Mm-hmm. Like that, that's what I want to do so bad. Like I just I just struggle with the talking part. I, I just want to be able to write it out and do it, you know, so it's not like a 10 minute long tutorial. Just like keep it two, three, keep it simple. Yeah. And really just focusing on the stuff that's actually going to benefit you and okay. having people think of certain ways that like the way you think of creating content is different 
than what it was because it used to be so like content used to always be more about like the broadcasting side of things um which you know even nowadays like things like podcasts or or people are watching more of than than like actual tv shows or or late night talk shows like things like i mean like look at shannon Shaw for example like he got an espn deal but he's probably making a lot more money doing his podcast stuff he got his own entity and he you know, left first take to do, not first take, left undisputed to do his own thing. And there's a lot of people that are doing their own thing. So just what it looks like to produce content and be someone in front of a camera, it's just, it's different. And I'm sure like colleges and stuff will kind of adapt as they go on, but it's, it's moving at a pretty fast pace. Right? Right, definitely, it definitely is. I'm, I'm kind of glad it is because I know people that can see the change before it really happens, know how to kind of jump on it. Mm-hmm. You know, like for a while, I've been wanting to do a podcast. So it's like certain people are like, oh, yeah, I'll do it with you. Oh, yeah, I'll do it. And then next week, it's like nothing happened. I'm like, all right, when are we finally going to start this? You know, so I was like, I'm going to just do it myself and see where it takes me. And then eventually people that did say they want to do it can just hop on and like we'll move from there. Definitely. <laughs> like going back to what you said at the start, it's just staying consistent. That's the best it, bro. Do you have any a final closing, I guess, remarks on advice for people that definitely do want to be in the position that you're in. I have, I've got friends, uh, specifically one of my boys that I used to be coworkers with. His name's Austin Gay. Visions by Austin. Okay. I Zay's and Austin's Instagram. But he, long term, after he gets out of college, wants to also do the same thing that you're doing. Yeah. And so, like, do you have any advice for creatives that would love to be? someone's personal cameraman and help them to actually better their aesthetic and find that that image Mm -hmm. yeah i mean the biggest first of all i know it's it's amazing that you got a lot of friends and including yourself that want to do be in a creative position and make that a full-time career and just having that mentality itself is the first step like it's it is a possibility and kind of get it out of your head that it couldn't happen like drill it into yourself that it will happen. It's, it's something that's going to be there. How you get there is always going to be different, but just having that you know, positive, like manifest it, manifest that's going to happen. And, you know, also like going back to being consistent, that's that's the biggest thing. Be, be consistent, not only in how frequent you put something out, but be consistent into why you're doing it in the first place. Mm-hmm. Like stay, just stay true to that. Find your own style, find what, what workflow or the way you do things best reflects who you are as a creative and just be consistent with that. Keep sharing your work. And there's going to be someone that's looking for the way you share stories or, if, you know, like even if there's someone you want to make something for, like if there's an athlete that you want to work for, just, you know, like I used to, I, I get mi- mixed feelings about me saying this too, just annoy people. Like don't, don't be, don't be worried that you're going to be annoying. Like I, I wouldn't be where I'm at if I didn't send that one DM one mm-hmm. DM that changed my entire life. So it's like, you don't know what response you're gonna get from someone. So just stay true to what you were doing, why you're doing it, and just reach out, put your work out there, put yourself out there, and, and everything will kind of just fall into place. Appreciate that, bro. Appreciate this. Thank you for jumping on, bro. Appreciate you for having this short bonus. <laughs> Thank you for jumping on. Oh, yeah. Okay, bro. Nah, this, this was a great conversation. You got a lot of good questions, so. Appreciate it. I'm definitely let you know when I'm back in A. And what's the, what's the wing place called? JR Crickets. We're going to go there. We're going to go there. Right. Type it in my notes. I'm not trying to forget. JR Crickets. Yeah. JR Crickets will be coming for you. JR Crickets. JR Crickets. Say less. All right, boss, man. Appreciate you, bro. All right. Yeah. Good talking to you again. Let's, um, yeah, let's, let's talk soon. Let me know if something else you need from me. Facts. I'm going to hit you soon. Yeah, well, appreciate you, bro.